As I was walking one evening fair, is my good hair in my lehyan. I met a gang of English blades, is here the treacher I can out. It's Michel Paxo Fellon, I was sassin Rindum, Count there for Clarige, and I play the fiddle, bower on, and I sing with the band Nodan. My name's Erdem McGann, I'm from Churchtown in County Dublin and I'm a flute player. Well, it's Michelle Carco Farlawin from Hayden Oring in Rhine in County Waterford and I play the accordion with Nodan. My name is uh, Mataro Farlawin and uh, I am a bazooki and a fiddle player in the band Nodan and uh, I sing as well. So the band originally started under the title Nuda in 2013 and we won the Sheen Sugailing competition that year um, as a seven-piece band and over time um, the band became uh, whittled down to four and Kevin Keneally was with us. Um, we recorded our first album as Nuadhan as a four-piece um, which was released in 2016. It's kind of a funny story, we, we stuck with the name Nuadha for a while and we were getting harassed by this other band who apparently had the same name and we didn't know. So uh, a few people left the band and the lineup kind of changed. So we decided that it would be a good time to try change the name and stop getting uh, emails. So uh, we changed it to New Dawn, which uh, I found in an old mythology book. Apparently, that back um, back in film Cool's time and stuff, if if you were called, let's just say your dad was called New the, um, you might be called New Dawn. So that uh, it's kind of small Nuda, so it kind of fit. And it also kind of the way Nuda, uh, Nua and Dawn are kind of um, like a new art form, or kind of a new, I suppose for me it was kind of a new band, a new thing, uh, a new form of, of uh, art. So I kind of liked the, the way it had a double meaning. The lads were playing in a band as New Dawn together before I met them. Um, I met the lads in when I was in fourth year in school, so Pax would have also been in fourth year in the two other lads were younger than that. But we met at a Sheensa Gwailin competition in the National Concert Hall. So I was in a band from my school, from Closh and Closh Discon, and the lads were representing their school in on Rhine. So uh, unfortunately that day, I think my, my band came third and the lads' band came first, so they like to hold that one over me. But um, I was, I was talking to McDara there for a bit, just backstage, only a couple of seconds, and then I think next year or two years after that, I got a friend request from McDara on Facebook and then started sending a few messages back and forth, um, you know, asking where we going to this festival or that festival, and then a few more years passed, I, I, didn't, I didn't really hear any more from the lads, and then I met them at the Willie Clancy Summer School one year, and we got playing together that year with a few other people. And uh, yeah, just after that, there was a, a space filled up, or a space came about in the band. They, they needed a, someone to fill in for a few gigs. It was at an Arathus, I think, in 2017, or maybe. I'm not exactly sure. Irla uh, McGowan joined us for a few gigs. Then he played with us at uh, Fatal Tread Picnic as well. And yeah, and then we asked him into the band uh, officially, as official as these things go and uh, he joined us and we played a few gigs maybe there for I'm not sure probably a year, year and a half and then we eventually decided to make uh, an album Dane Dee Wall um, which means what harm in our local dialect here in Unrhyme and uh, yeah so that's kind of all the history that there is with the band really. I'm not sure did we ever set a date to, to record the album but I think we all knew in our heads that we were we were slowly working towards it anyway. Um, so over over a few different gigs we, we were chopping and changing different sets on the set list and then I think towards the end we kind of settled on 14-ish tracks that we were we were all happy with and we, we'd all spent time putting together. We, we had kind of been talking about recording another album um, in, the, in the future and 
it was kind of in the back of our minds, but, you know, we were always messing around and putting sets together, and it, the addition of the flute made a bit big difference to us. It was more that we had a gig in Bantry at the Chief O'Neill Festival um, in 2018, I think. I'm not very good with the years, so I don't know why I forget. But uh, it was a great gig, and uh, we really enjoyed it. And we, we had put some sets together for that. But then after that gig, the band kind of... We all had to be different places, you know. I had to be in college in Cork, Pax had to be in Cork. Um, Cork actually went on Erasmus in Luxembourg, and... Uh, then we went to Montana for the second half of the year, and Irda was in Dublin. So we didn't really see that much of each other for a year. You know, Irda and Pax were in final year as well. So we saw a bit of each other, but not a crazy amount. And um, yeah, well, so we just kind of take sets that worked in Bantry and say, okay, well, how can we jig this around? Do you know, is there anything we did like, didn't like? We managed, when I came back, to be offered the studio at the Cork School of Music, uh, where Pax and Mark Dara, uh, studied and that was a great help to us and we got on to a few other friends of ours to get the painting sorted for the for the cover of it and uh, all those logistics and together it came it came together in some way uh, some racket's way and we had uh, a friend of mine sean hegarty and he's a friend of all of ours at this stage um sean hegarty recorded the album and he's an absolute whiz and all things tech and kind of who is always my go-to friend when it comes to technological difficulties or questions. So Sean recorded it um, in the booth um, in the CDIT Core School of Music and then we had Martin O'Malley master the album afterwards. So that's kind of how we recorded it. We would always be mindful of not playing to the crowd specifically and playing what people like to hear, but if it resonates with us and we get a good response, you know, it, it's generally a runner, um, and that's kind of been my experience anyway over the years, and I, I think the lads would agree with me. Um, so then when it comes to arranging tracks, we really try and just go with what's available to us. So we're lucky that we all play more than one instrument, and um, three of us sing in the band, even though Irla can sing, um, and uh, that that's yet to come. But um, yeah, we kind of work around what's available to us um, when we're putting a set together. And we kind of try and leave the tunes be as much as possible in terms of um, letting the tune maintain its own integrity and you know not messing with the tune. But then at the same time, in terms of arranging, Makdara is kind of the harmony whiz amongst us, even though <coughs> Korach and I and Irle have a, an understanding of harmony and um, I studied music in college as well. Magdara is really the one who uh, would generally have the final say in terms of how we're going to harmonize the tune or the, the song. Well, I'm not sure do I have a favorite track on the album, but um, I think we were all pretty happy with uh, with all the tracks on the album. I think that was, that was the important thing for, for us that we were all happy with everything that was being put out there and um, so I think probably the, the maybe not that I like one particular track but uh, I liked maybe the the comparison in between different tracks so there's a few tracks on there that uh, you know we put together maybe a few years or one or two years before the album was recorded and then there were other tracks that were, were more recently put together before the album was recorded so I think uh, Maybe not to everyone's ear, but particularly to us, uh, you know, I, I can see a difference in our, our music over maybe the space of two years, how, how it changed and different sounds that came in. So that's that's sort of a pleasing thing to have on the album. To pick one track from the album that kind of stands out to me, it, it's difficult because I usually pick the tracks that I have the least involvement with, say the, the two fiddles uh, together there, um, Mathar and Pax, that's lovely track or your solo track, uh, Boher Flo and Mala, uh, I only come in at the end so I have time to kind of sit back from it and see what that music means because my influence might not be as, as strong in it and I really enjoy doing that but and, and that's not just simply being modest I, I love listening to what other people bring and when you're not part of it yourself you kind of learn other things about the other people's thoughts and uh, how they're expressing the, the music that way I'm slow to pick a favourite track 
I, I think I rather think the album as an overall bigger work than different tracks comparing and uh, putting them together. I just don't think that's uh, it's, it's, it's not a mindset that that works for me at the moment. I think I just I like to be proud of the whole thing. And if there was if there was a track that stood out better than the rest, I'd be kind of going back saying, well, why is it better than the rest? And we should have improved other things. So. Luckily, I don't. I, I think there's a, a consistency there that I'm very happy with, and uh, I think every track has something different to, to offer. And you know, I hear different emotions, different friendships, different. You know, just, just they're all there's a great variety there. I think, uh, which, which I really like. So I, I'm slow to compare them, if I'm honest. I suppose if there is one track that stands out to me on the album, would be Bohor Clo and Mala. And it's, even though it's a rather long track and it doesn't get as much uh, airplay as we'd like because of its length, um, it's just, I, I love the feeling that Mahdara puts into the song and the entire arrangement and um, even though it's rather minimal um, in terms of the overall band involvement until we play the tunes, the two, the two jigs afterwards, I, I love that the feeling is right and it's a very emotional song and um, just the arrangement is very elegant um, in, in the arrangement that Makdara came up with. It'd be hard to pick out the the biggest influence on my music, I think there was a lot of them down the years, but uh, for the most part I tend to uh, take most of my inspiration from flute players from North Connacht, so the likes of uh, Leitrim and Roscommon and Sligo and those places. So. I suppose, speaking personally, the greatest influence on my music is the music of the people I grew up around and learned music from um, in On Rhine and uh, some of the music teachers that used to come to the area. People like Sean and Quivino Faril would be the two kind of primary influences that I would um, like to mention. But then we had other excellent teachers um, like Bobby Gardner and uh, Peter O'Connor and fine, fine teachers who we learned different things from. And I suppose I couldn't avoid um, mentioning that Danu are kind of the, the, the biggest act really in the area to come out of the area. And then some very important people too, such as the late John Dwyer, um, who would be hugely influential in the way we think about music and the way we play music. And I think it's it's important when we do play that their influence, or at least their philosophy in the music, comes across uh, slightly because that older generation, uh, they played in a time when it was difficult to be an Irish musician and uh, they managed to keep such a, a lovely tradition going strong and added to it themselves. So it wasn't just taking it and passing it on, but they did their own thing with it. Well, for myself personally, my biggest influence since I was a child was Andy Irvine and Banksy which has proved like very handy when you're trying to put a band together because you know that band thanks to you probably I, I don't know has anyone arranged songs as well since for me personally anyway and so um yeah I listen to Andy Irvine every day as a child when I was going to bed when I woke up during the day it's kind of all I did really I just listen to Andy Irvine um but yeah there's loads of influence I suppose life in general just throws loads of influences at you when when you don't really know. Like took people, people and their kindness, and so um, some friends of mine, such as Derek Hickey and Park McDonough and stuff, they'd probably be two of my biggest influences as well. had a massive influence on me in terms of place in my music and the importance of place and the Gaeltach that Makdara Karach and I grew up in on Rhein is has definitely influenced my music and I think the lads would agree and Irla's music 
um, I think would definitely have um, originations from both sides of its family, um, be it from Mayo or from Dublin. But um, yeah, on Ryan, speaking for myself, on Ryan is very, very rich in terms of music and song. And it, it was kind of unavoidable that we would be influenced by that and that therefore the music and the, the place is absolutely huge in our music. So for me personally, anyway, when, I, when I'm playing in any tune, it, it's not only like some people assume that we just play music for our, from our own locality and tunes that ear would known. We, we also take a lot of influences from other other people who have recorded recently and, and in the past. Um, and that's from Flanagan Brothers up to Day Don and, and uh, anyone in between as well. And uh, other friends of ours too, um, who play brilliant music. So it's it's not that we're very uh, closed mind minded in in that regard, but when we do pick a certain version of a tune, um, we're not stuck to it in a way that would kind of nail us to the floor. We like to have a bit of movement in it and uh, not to be too strict with ourselves either, because music has to kind of happen naturally, and it's it's not really about um, the history of a tune or anything. It's how you express it. Um, in your own kind of flavour or your own style. Yeah, I think a sense of place definitely has an effect on your, your music and definitely influences it. I suppose in my case, as much as it, there were good good and great flute players who, who passed through Dublin, when I was starting to really get into to music and particularly flute music, I didn't really associate um, Dublin with, with, with those flute players at the time. I probably just wasn't aware of them. So I started to look further afield and at the obvious place for most flute players is, is North Connacht so that's a real hotbed of, of flute playing tradition there so the obvious greats like John McKenna that was that was kind of my starting point. Place is probably important to everyone um, but especially the, our traditional Irish musicians are, are any any musician really from a kind of a folk music setting. The music means a lot to me I guess uh, especially the music from here I like I like that I can Play music that's that's around here from around here and trace it back to you know Sean McCrae and then Nicholas Tobin and Donald Clancy and uh, yeah I, I just really love that um, I guess for that reason too uh, they're not just tunes or frequencies of sound they're they're memories they're emotions they're times in my life where I felt different things and every time I listen to the tracks I can hear that you know so that's that's something I enjoy, I guess. So to me, music is a very personal thing that can be expressed to, to, the, to the public and in a, in a certain way. And there is this, this I suppose it's a theory in a way, but it, it's in the tradition at home. Um, when people are singing songs, they, people would say that, do, do they have the dokhshir? So the, the kind of the running back in your mind about people who would have sung, sang the song before you or who would have written the song in tougher times or um, also in, in your own presence there kind of a, a, in the moment where you're thinking about the music you're playing or the song you're singing. And that idea of Dukhshir to me is very important in, in the music we play because you're, you're not just thinking of, of there and then uh, to the audience, if there is an audience or to your friends um, wherever you're playing. It's it's you, it's the people who played before you, it's people who will play after you. And um, you're part of a very important tradition and it's up to you, like I mentioned uh, maybe before, the likes of John Dwyer passed down such an important wealth of music, but it didn't stop him from adding to it himself and writing probably one of the most beautiful tunes in, in the tradition. Um, so it, it's, it's really that idea that you're part of something a lot, a lot <laughs> bigger than yourself. Well, I think Irish music has a huge place in the Irish identity, you know. The first thing that comes to mind is that John Dwyer once said to me that he thinks Irish music is really deeply rooted in, in like, Irish people and the, the land and our ancestors, and I, I can't argue with that point, you know, I think if you listen to someone like his tunes or his brother Finbar, there's something there that you just won't hear anywhere else in the world, um, something very, very unique, um, 
And I suppose that's why folk music exists in nearly every country, because people dealt with their own problems and their own happiness and music was a way of just expressing themselves. So I think it would make sense that it's part of the Irish identity, you know. Um, when it comes to my role in Irish music, I, I guess, again, it's one of those things I try not to think about too much. Um, because I think you can get overwhelmed in thinking what you should be doing as opposed to just doing something, you know. I think sometimes the best thing to do is just sit down and play. Um, I think one thing is very important, especially as a young musician, is not to be not to be keeping any secrets from anyone. I think it's it's very important to share your knowledge, whatever that is, you know, whatever thing you learn, anything you learn, just be happy to share it. As people like Sean and Clavino for real were happy to do with us. Um, yeah, I, I think that's very important. And in, and in another way, I think another thing that's very important is just everyone being themselves. I think, again, music is a conversation, and if you are yourself, you can only add to the music, because it's like someone adding to a conversation. If everyone is truly honest and happy to listen and yeah just being themselves it, it, it it'll always just add to the music I, I don't think it can take away from it if you're truly being yourself it's very hard to say what the role of Irish traditional music is in Irish identity today I suppose my own personal opinion it's a, it obviously plays a massive role in, in my identity as, as a person but then I think on a wider scale for in general for Irish people, I'm not sure does it play as much for a role. I think most people would probably spend most of their their days, most of their lives not really thinking or spending much time thinking about Irish music and probably not fully comprehending what Irish music really is um, in truth. So I think though as long as, as it's still there and people are still playing and carrying on the other things that come with, with Irish music, because it's so much more than just music. It's like I was saying, it's it, it's a it's a lifestyle. There's there's social history involved in the tunes and the names of the tunes and the songs, and there's also other things which which shape the people who play Irish music. So I think as long as it's as that's still going on, it always gives people the uh, the opportunity to to dive into that world and to to uh, to look into it. My role within the tradition, I suppose, is to pass on the music and to um, allow it to continue its life as it was taught to me. And I remember having a conversation with John Dwyer about that. And I said, would you, um, John Dwyer, the famous fiddle player and composer and from the Dwyer family. And I remember saying, John, would you not be disappointed if people didn't play your tunes? And he said, well, if they were any good, they'll be still played, you know, and for me, um, a person like John Dwyer really encapsulates everything that is the, um, the traditional music of Ireland, you know. He was humble and modest and always put the music first and him second, even though his own compositions would be considered some of the best compositions. Um, it, it was never about him and I think that's my role within the tradition it's it's not about me it's it's not about what I've done for the music it's just about passing the music on and trying to enjoy it in the meantime and you know have a bit of fun with it I suppose the role of young people especially in in this kind of neo neoliberal society is to realize that it has a potential that kind of transcends just mere uh, commercial or um, or even uh, folkloric or uh, educational content. Um, it's I suppose to to show people how important it is outside um, of the ways that we've taught thought about music um, to date. And I think that maybe when you take uh, the the example of of some of the composers that we had, say Tommy Peoples, and I mentioned John Dwyer earlier, um, that they were obviously experts in their own tradition, grew up on it, and uh, but they weren't afraid to to add to it. And I think if we were only to sit back and pass on everything without changing, um, I think that would be more untraditional than uh, adding to it and maybe even doing things that might not be viewed as, as fully correct or fully traditional. Um, but I do think that there is a line that needs to be drawn as as how far that should go 
And I think that really comes down to how much you can respect uh, your own tradition and how far that respect um, complements the music and also how much that kind of conservatism can take away from the music. I, I do think there's still space for innovation. Um, I think people get scared of that word, but I think what it, innovation just means is that when you sit down in a cafe or someone and someone new comes along, they are a new person and they bring something new to the conversation. And equally in music, when someone is new, especially young musicians, they're just adding to the conversation, expressing themselves, adding a touch of colour to the world. And I think I'll always welcome that. Um, I think it's great too that the old music, music is being preserved and archived so well by the likes of the ITMA and stuff. But I, I, I think there's a way of, of innovating uh, in our recent times, just like back in the 70s and 80s and when the likes of Panksy and Steve Cooney and the Bathy Band and all, like a lot of what they innovated with is what we play every day now, you know? And I think that's fantastic. And I think we, we should always look back and admire them for that. It's just something that really blows my mind, how they had like a, like practically an, a, an empty canvas and they just painted such a beautiful picture. Like such a people, like, especially when it comes to a compliment, like people like Alec Finn, and your one, Artie McGlynn, like they had nothing to go off, virtually nothing, nothing to go off, and they just created something so amazing. But I think, I'm not sure, but I think they would like people to keep going too, as well as preserving their music. I think they'd like them to keep going, develop things, and just for people to express themselves. But um, that's just just my opinion, you know. I don't think it's for me to decide what the future holds for traditional music. I, I think it's. It's always been shaped by the, the broader community that plays it, so I don't think any one person can decide or, or uh, make any judgments on where it's going. In terms of my own music, who knows, maybe I should think about it more, but generally my approach is I, I, I try, not to, try not to think about those things, I think they affect your music in a, in a negative way more than a positive way, so for me I'm just going to keep playing on the way I am and, and just see what happens. If there is a danger that Irish traditional music could be swept under the carpet um, with, you know, with technology and with, you know, how fast paced life is nowadays, traditional music um, sometimes, I think, can struggle to keep up. Um, but I do think the future is bright um, and that with the right attitude and with people being open-minded to move forward but still leave the music have its own integrity but finding new ways to platform that music um, be that in a commercial way or an informal way you know i think there's where music will live on i think there's a lot of pressure these days to fit within a box and um, i'm not sure if the lads would agree with me but for me our, we are our own box, um, in a sense, and I don't think I'd ever want to come to a point where we felt we were creating music um, for anyone other than ourselves. Of course, it's important people enjoy our music, but I think, therefore, our role within the, our tradition is just to be true to ourselves and to be true to our music and keep enjoying what we do. Our goal was never, and I don't think it ever will be, um, to reach any particular fame or anything like that. Our goal was always to enjoy playing with each other. And um, while that continues long, may we last.